What did you surprise Shadi Crew? I'll catch you on my lunch break. Um, it's a couple things. I thought about going live, but I know how the Holy Spirit be joining us. And um, yeah, I needed it just a little bit more control so I could get back to work. But I just wanted to say I'm picking up on how attacked my mind gets. And as long as I keep pushing, God always gives me something, whether it's a revelation in this area or an idea for business or my projects or something. When I push through, it's always something bigger on the other end of it. And I'm always like, that's how the enemy was fighting me. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I would be lying to y'all if I didn't tell y'all, like, I woke up this morning and I was like, I don't want to. Like, think about King of Spouse stuff, God. I don't. I, and, and to say that, even in hearing me say that, it would be to not think about my relationship with him. Okay? Come through Holy Spirit. But I was kind of, that's what I was on. Like, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to release nothing about it, God. Nothing. <laughs> right? Um, and it kind of seemed like when I be doing that, he'd be like, oh, really? Okay, well, here you go. Okay? So, this is going to bring a few things like something we talked about on the live yesterday and then also what I did in a community post the other day it's gonna bring it together but um I wanted y'all to know like for real keep pushing and fighting regardless like in a dream I had earlier in the morning um we was getting chased by white lions and I'm gonna have to come back and tell y'all the whole dream but to summarize like in that moment um and I can't even kind of chased but also kind of like they were just they're predators right and um they could smell fear all that stuff I used to have dreams like this when I was little and um what I was told while running was keep running forward it's less scary this way that way you're not turning around looking behind you right like just keep running forward and know like in case some of them do end up getting it to where you can see them while you're running you we had people shooting at them while we were running okay so i might come back to that in totality but um literally if you're feeling down discouraged don't let depression start to sink in on you none of that like i just start cleaning up like i was like oh I, who finna no i start cleaning up and working and stuff like nah and so i want to start off with this but i'm gonna keep it a book with y'all this is one of those things to where like if it ties directly to your kingdom spouse um situation you're gonna know and no I don't want to get in the details of all of it so you just gonna have to catch my drift so you need to be praying like holy spirit you know like this for me let me know but I think y'all will catch my drift but then because these relationships because love is God and it reflects the kingdom of course this applies to um the kingdom of heaven all of us as believers anyway so yes it is for a specific group but it's also for a specific group, which is believers. Okay, so um, I'm going to call it, <sighs> we don't want and we won't accept half or dead. Okay, and I'm also put on the end, don't budge. And then when I was finishing, because I have like two pages worth of notes, um, try. Like, let's just call it try. Okay, you have to, like at least try, right? So, um, let's just hop into it. So y'all know the other day I was led to the passage, passage of scripture where Solomon judges wisely. Um, and honestly, I don't even know if it didn't seem like that's what God was getting at in the dream, but the numbers I remember in the dream is what led me to chapter three, verse 23. Okay. But this is found in Kings chapter three. Verses 16 through 28, I believe. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the story, I I would say go read it because I'm definitely about to paraphrase like crazy because I'm not going to read all these verses. Um, but there are two women. And in this version, I don't know what version this is pulled up on the computer right now. This is the New American Standard Bible. The other day I, was re I wasn't reading in that version. But um, it's two women. One of the women her baby they both have a baby like on the same night i think her baby um dies all right and so in the middle of the night she like switches them out she goes and gets the baby that's alive the other woman's baby because she's aware that hers is dead switches them out they wake up the next morning the lady's like this is not my baby like what is this oh my gosh and then they have to go to king solomon to decide what to do in the matter now imagine being that woman you know you just had a baby you wake up and your baby's not there that's a whole 
you know, situation and like a situation we didn't even have to be in, right? Like, why are we even in this situation? My, I was just asleep, which, okay, that's that's a point too. Because I asked God, like, that's wild. Like, how she even get her baby? Like, she was asleep. And so she swapped him out because she was asleep, right? That's just de deception. Like, de deceit, just like the enemy. He really tries when we sleep. Uh, that's how his people move. That's how he moves through people, right? So um, we know that Solomon in his wisdom, he's like, hey, you know what? Like, let's just cut the baby in half then, right? <laughs> and the real mama is like, no, don't do that. And that's what I put on the community post. Like, she was so stirred. She was so moved by her love for her child because that's her baby that's alive and whole that this other woman is trying to say is hers, right? She's like, nope, don't do that. She can have him. She can have my son. She can have my baby, which in the community post, I told y'all represented the marital promise, right? She can have my baby whole and live. Why? Because that's going to keep the baby alive, right? And in the version I read, it was after the real mama said that, that the one that was pretending, masquerading and stuff was like, nah, like cut him in half. That way neither one of us can have him, right? And so if we're thinking about a real baby, a real baby, like a physical baby. If you cut a baby in half with a sword, okay, because that was the the proposal, that baby is not going to be alive. So why is it that the real mama is out here saying like, nah, you can take my whole baby. I'm aware that's my whole baby. You can take it alive and whole. And the other one is still out here like, nah, like cut it in half neither one of us can have it and that's what i was getting out on the community post like you really just didn't want her to have her baby like that's crazy because you don't care you don't love the baby right that's why you were still willing to like no let's just cut it in half because if i can't have mine she don't need to have hers either right all right Keep, follow me all right ain't no spouse specific i told y'all i thought god was leading me to three and 23 verse 23 says the then the king said the one said, the one says, this is my son who is living and your son is the dead one. That's what one of them saying. The other one says, no, your son is the dead one and mine is the living one. That's two different stories and the total opposite, right? Two completely different stories, total opposite. Okay. One is saying, keep the baby living, whole, don't kill him, don't cut him. All right. The other one is saying the opposite. And well, neither one of us will have them. She was going to let the other one who wasn't even a mama have them, right? The other one over here saying neither one of us going to have them. Kill them. Cut them in half, right? Two totally different things. This is why we have to pray for wisdom for all of God's children, right? One, when it comes to love, because this story illustrates that too. When you love something, you want it whole, okay? You don't want it to die. You don't want nobody to cut it into pieces, right? Because you love it. That's what real love is, okay? But it's also a testament to wisdom that he only would have got from God to even propose something like that. Like, hey, I know what to do. Like, But he knew what he was doing. He was about, It was about to be proved. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The love was actually about to be proved. I'm finna see which one loved this child. Obviously, it wasn't the one saying, kill it, cut it. Let's take it in pieces. Nobody can have it. I worked up. I asked God to help me deliver this graciously, gently, and not fiery, okay? So... The one screaming all that, all the wrong stuff, had absolutely no say-so in the matter, okay? You you not the real mama poo, and you not the king, but you out here trying to run stuff. Talking about someone neither one of us going to have. It's giving Satan, but we're going to come to that, okay? Absolutely no say-so, no love for the child, pressed, and knew the fate of her baby. Already knew that her baby was dead, all right? Already knew that, already knowing, and yet causing all this prob all these problems, right? Okay. So let's transition this over to the enemy. So hold on, God. Should we go to the enemy? I'm trying to see if you want to hit on relationships a bit more specifically and then go to the enemy. I think they're gonna intertwine. So let's keep reading my notes. <sighs> The devil wants to take as many people with him as he can. He knows his fate. And truthfully, I should have known I was getting fought hard because who knew I was going to be in Revelations, all right, 20 and 10. The enemy don't like that scripture. Revelations 20 and 10 says the fate of the devil is given in Revelations 20 and 10. Remember, sis already knew the fate of her child. It was already dead, all right? 
Verse 10 says, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever for the ages of the ages. The devil knows his fate. The devil has a role. Right? Get as many of them to come with me. I'm going to get as many of them to experience what I got to experience. Is that not what sis was doing in the story? My baby's already dead. It wasn't even because she really just wanted the other lady's baby. Like, because she wanted the, the actual baby. I just don't want you to have it. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Okay. Are y'all catching my drift? It ain't even because I love the baby. I just don't want you to have it. That's how the enemy moves. I'm already going to hell. The devil, not Megan. The devil. Let's see who I can get to go with me. Let's see who I can get to share in this fate with me. Right? So whack. I said, it's sick, God. It's sick. Right? Y'all know in like real, real toxic situations, just like when we went live and we talked about that woman who killed her boyfriend because he was cheating, just killed him. You never loved that man. If you killed him for cheating, you didn't love him. That's control. That's you wanting him to do what you want him to do. Anybody that loves somebody and they get mistreated by somebody, you're not going to kill them. Come on, that's a little far stretched. That's just me though. Same thing though. That's that energy. Like if I can't have you, nobody else can have you. That's not how kingdom marriages work. That's not how godly relationships are. It ain't on no, if I can have you, nobody can have you. But it also ain't on no, let's all share. So we're going to get to that too. Um, the the lady who wasn't the real mama in the story, that's what she was on. Nah, still cut it in half. That way neither one of us can have it. Neither one of us going to have a baby. Kill the baby. Neither one of us going to have a baby. I can have you. Nobody else can, right? So that's how the enemy moves. All right, let's get to this. I said sharing, but it's really not even sharing. That's why he told me don't put sharing in the title. It's I don't want half because that then that would be your half, right? But I don't want half and I won't accept half, but I also don't want dead and I won't accept dead. All right, so we already hit this. The baby would have been physically dead. I wrote, I'm not accepting my kingdom spouse spiritually dead. He shouldn't want to accept me spiritually dead. Okay. I don't want that. And I'm also not accepting that. Not halfway, not dead. And that it can come in different ways. Okay. So the specific way we're going to talk about today though. All right. Anybody that's okay with half of you, half of you or a part of you does not love you. Okay. They don't. And I mean genuinely okay with it, okay? Not from control, not from, um, you know, just to say they got part of you. Anybody who really loves you does not want part of you. How do we know this? God does not want part of us. God does not want half of us. I've always had that knowing. And honestly, y'all, this ain't my first rodeo. Right? It's not. I've been through a lot of stuff in relationships. I ain't never wanted half of a man. Now, had I set had had I settled in that? Yes, I have. Okay? I had. But I was never truly okay with it. That's not what I really wanted. Because when you really love somebody, you want to really be with somebody. Like, in totality, right? You have a righteous jealousy. Not a control jealousy. A righteous jealousy. Why? God is a jealous God. We we are like our father in heaven. Stop playing with me. God don't be like that with us. You already you already know it. You know what it is. God don't be like that with us. He don't cuz he do, y'all. He he do. Okay? He's a jealous God who does not want part of us, who does not want half of us. Which is why we won't take part of somebody except half of somebody. And definitely not our kingdom spouses. We're not settling in that. Because God don't settle in that with us. And I'm going to get back to... Um, actually, no, maybe I should say it now. Damn. A lot of the times, like when I... I don't want this. I, didn't, I did not ask for this. Like I, I feel like I can't make that clear enough, right? 
a lot of times I be like, God, you're saying no. And it's, I knew what I was going into. I knew God showed me what I was dealing with up front. And so when it became a tell him no, say no, tell him no, say no. Why is it always tell him no, say no, but I can't go nowhere? Like, that's the part I can figure out. Like, if the answer's no, if we're not doing this, free me. Let me go, right? The answer's no, but you're not moving. The answer's no, but you're not going to budge. That's where that next part of the title comes in. Don't budge. Right? Because we're planting the good seeds. But when I was really thinking about this morning, when he had me writing out all these notes, is that not how he do us too? He don't just accept what we trying to do and be like, okay. Now he do still love us though. That's like, when I say this reflects everything, it reflects everything. But just because he love us doesn't mean he's giving us an okay. Doesn't mean he's agreeing that something is right. Or he going to just accept it. He may allow it, but that don't mean he accepts it. Okay. He don't budge. He still loves us, but he does not budge. He does not change what is true, what is right, what is a sin, what is not a sin, what is godly, what is not godly. He don't change that. God ain't going to budge. His word is not going to budge, but he's still going to love us. That's why you got me out here saying no and disagreeing and still saying it right here. Oh. And when we think about it, when we come back which i'm gonna I'm come back to that that's the back page note. so we're gonna come back to that but it's in god still not budging yet and still still loving us that correction and change comes in like you really a man of your word we can trust god he he don't change what he be saying ever and he ain't never gonna change what he be saying ever same god right so we're going to come back to that. So let's keep talking about um, like how this is as be- for believers as a whole. So he reminded me the other day when I answered the phone, I said, ew, yuck. And I was laughing. He knew I was like playing, but I was like, why did I say that? Like, I'm dramatic. You know, sometimes that can be a little flirty. But why today of all days that I say, ew, yuck, right? So for a lot of y'all, like I said, that tension been coming in where it's like, no, like, <laughs> No, we got to draw a line in the sand. No, uh, right? That tension has been there. And it's still been a, I love you, but a, I, I'm not with this. I'm not doing this, right? That's been there. Revelations 3 and 16. And you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. And I'm going to vomit you from my mouth. Ew, yuck. Is that not what that's giving? Ew, yuck. But since you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out. You got to pick one. And we talked about that on the live. Remember the Holy Spirit took over the live yesterday and I was like, whoop, didn't write none of that down, right? It's a reflection of the kingdom. It's a reflection of our walk with Christ. Ew, I don't want to do that. That's why you you should feel like that. Depending on what it is that y'all are dealing with, that y'all are not agreeing about whatever it is, Right? Whatever somebody got to get delivered from, whatever it is, that's how you should feel. Because that's how God feels. That's how we felt about own sin. I remember me September 2020. I remember God giving me a lot of these words. The top three things, I'm not going to list all top three, but one of the big things was really the wrong relationships and entertaining Jezebel. That was one of the big things in my prophetic warnings. And so I feel that picking up even in my relationship with my kingdom spouse. Like, you're not just getting prophetic encouragement, Meg. You're also getting cut the crap, Meg. You're getting all the Meg. I'm your per- you getting all of it. You first, right? Before everybody else get it. This was one of the big things. This is one of the verses he always had me at. Revelations 3, Revelations 2. I was always in Revelations. Guess what? Got another verse for y'all. Also, Revelations, okay? So, lukewarm. You got to pick. And, and a lot of us, a lot of them are feeling it. And that's why it's weird for us because it's like, hey, I know I'm not with it. Let me go, God. No. What? <laughs> Attention because you know, like, well, if it come down to it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to let you go because you coming against God, right? Like, and we're going to get to that too. I, re- I actually wrote down a whole lot of stuff. So y'all just bear with me.
Thank God for the flow of the notes because it don't be me. So, anybody okay with half of you or part of you does not love you. God wants all of you. Your spouse is going to have to go through God to get you because God wants all of the both of you. You're not getting to your kingdom spouse without going to God because he is a jealous God. He has to okay it, okay? You got to go through God so that you're not misleading them, so that you're not hurting them, so that you're telling them the truth, so that y'all's union is a way of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That's what he calls his believers to do. You have to go through God to get to your spouse. He wants the both of you whole. God has to come first because you cannot worship your spouse. So with certain mindsets, with certain things, certain influences, certain unclean views and mindsets and perspectives, for me to conform to that, for me to come into agreement with that would be for me to come out of agreement with God, would be for me to put you over God, would be for me to start worshiping you, for be, would be for me to conform to a mindset and put all these things above God, which is why I can't do it, right? So I wrote down, you can't worship that man and God. You can't worship the devil and God. Believers, that's lukewarm. And so as a wife, I cannot put my husband above God. Especially if there's still some things where he's still lost in the sauce of this world. I cannot do it. And I wouldn't want him to do that with me. I don't, I don't want you to love me more than you love God. Because I'm a human. You need to love God first. You need to worship God first, right? Same as believers. You, you can't hold hands with the devil and God. Worship the devil and God. I can't agree with a mindset that puts my spouse over God and I'm worshiping him and agree with God. I can't do it. We can't do it. And that's like, I'm that's why a lot of this like pressure tension is coming in and you gonna have to stand your ground and not budge and know that god got your back and if they don't agree with that if if they you you got to take it over god right like it don't mean i don't love you but i can't put you above him i don't worship you i worship god right and it's different mindsets. Yes, I'm thinking of the one I'm fighting particularly, right? But it don't just have to be the one I'm dealing with. It could be different things. So let's go back to the enemy. The enemy is okay with you halfway in because he has part of you. So now you're lukewarm. So now God is going to spit you out. So that's the Revelations 3 and 16. What's wild is even in hell, this is what I wrote down. Even in hell, the devil doesn't run anything he's really and truly just trying to get us there with him right he he's never he he don't have all the power he's he's not in charge like that how do we know that revelations 1 and 18 and the living one this is jesus talking and i was dead and behold i am alive forevermore and i have the keys of death and of hades like I said, Shorty wasn't the real mama nor the king, but she was trying to call the shots. The devil does not own your marital power. Or is he God, but he trying to call the shots. He trying he trying to make it to where like, let's just cut it in half. Nah, we're not going to cut it in half, actually. We're not going to do this halfway. We're not going to do this dead. That might be what you're proposing, but that's not what we're doing. The love is being proved. I wholeheartedly believe your spouse is going to see that. And we know God sees that. God is who's going to give your spouse that wisdom. I hear what the devil is presenting, but that's not what we're going for. I'd rather give him up. I'd rather lose him. I'd rather sacrifice it. I'd rather not have him. Of course, this is not to say that we're like, hey, devil, you can have him. No, that's not that, right? Solomon wasn't really going to let that baby get cut in half. But God has to see your heart in all of this. It's her deep love for her baby that caused her to be like, wait, King, hold on. I'm like, I don't like what you presented me with. <laughs> I don't like that choice. I don't like that option. 
But Solomon had to see that. It's her deep love that stirred her to be like, oh, I don't know about halfway. I don't know about dead. That's my baby. Hold on. And I don't want my baby dead. Do y'all get what I'm saying? But the enemy all in our ear. Propositions, proposals, stealing stuff. Because again, how you even got my baby? Like what's going on? Right? And he don't run nothing. He don't got the keys to nothing. They locking him in there. He ain't just choosing to go to hell. Really and fiery. My man gonna have to get used to it. I'm fiery. I cry. I really do love breaking down scripture. Like, I can't wait for the day that we can do this together. But, like, I don't play that. And the devil is a liar. Like, he's just a liar. Okay? It ain't no neither one of us gonna have them. Nah, that's not what we doing. You don't run nothing. All right? We're not killing them. We're not cutting them in half. We're not doing half halfway. We're not doing it. Okay? So, that was the other verse. I gave y'all Revelation 20 and 10. That's the devil's fate. I gave y'all Revelation 3 and 16. That's lukewarm. And I gave y'all... Revelations 1 and 18, which is where Jesus has the keys to death in Hades. And as believers, we got to know that it don't just, it's not just a kingdom spot situation. The devil wants you to settle in this life. He cool if you lukewarm. It's God that's going to spit you out if you're lukewarm. That's what the devil wants, right? We can't play into that. He's recommended we kill the promise, kill the purpose, kill eternity in heaven with you because that's not what he has. So he's always recommending we do that. He's always trying to get us to succumb to that. He's always trying to get us to do the hokey pokey. I ain't doing that with you. I'm not doing that with you no more. I had enough of that. And I really was just tired. I'm not doing that with you no more. Right? So the last thing. God don't budge. His truth don't change. What he's staying on don't change. And yet and still he loves us. Unconditionally. Right? That's the model. That's the example. I ain't got to agree with you. I don't accept it. I allow it because you got free will. Unconditionally because you're mine, right? And I'm going to continue to love you unconditionally. And it's that love. That love is what allows us to make changes and corrections. It was never because God was chasing me down. Like, don't get me wrong. When I was trying to present the wrong stuff to him, he was like, Megan, right? But he was never just, you got to change. You got to change. You got, that's not how God did me. I changed because I got tired. Holy Spirit don't start, <laughs> right? Think about why you actually changed. God, you so good to me. You love me so much. I want to give you my all. I want to do better. Right? You loved me when I wasn't. Right? That's why we change and make corrections. I always tell people this because they be like, Megan, what made you stop doing certain things? Why you don't do certain things? Or why do you do even certain things less frequently than you used to? Because I'm not perfect. My kingdom spots know everything that I be doing. Right? Everything. What made you like n not want to do this much? And it's not me. I'm a human. I got human nature. You know what it is? It's spending time with him. It's being in his presence. It's being loved on. And I always tell people that he got a special way of making you not desire things that aren't him. Because I love you so much. I want you. I desire you. I crave you. You stop wanting the stuff that's not God. It's the same thing. He has a special way of doing it. His love literally removes the taste for other things because you find everything you need in him and you stop searching for those things in other places. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Until you come to that place with him, you're going to continue to search. And it's always why were you doing the other things? Why are you doing the other things? At that point in my life, I didn't know how to cope. I didn't know how to deal with anxiety. I knew those things helped me quickly, right? I know now because I spend so much time with God. I love God. Like, I ain't got to do that. I can, everything I need is where you at. And, and that's where I struggle so much. If I'm being really transparent, like, hey, like, you make me feel like I'm not enough. They don't know that you're enough yet. 
And it's also a projection of them not feeling like they're enough. And that's only going to be corrected if the both of y'all are spending time with God. Growing closer to God, you're going to grow closer to each other and your relationship is going to grow. Your love for God is going to grow. Your love for each other is going to grow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whew. Because that'd be beating me up. Like, hey, I'm just not enough for you, Emma. <laughs> hey, what is it? Ain't never been. Like, okay. I hear you saying you love me. But why isn't it enough? Why isn't it enough? And we do God like that. Like, I, I told y'all, I always rock to God. I thought you was cool. I, I fool with you. I rock with you. You know, you my dog. <laughs> but why didn't I choose him fully, wholeheartedly? Again, we run from the purifying process, all of that. It's a number of things, okay? So last thing, because I know this is getting kind of lengthy. There's a difference in choosing him, trying. And when I say him, I mean God. Choosing him, trying, and failing because you're imperfect, because you're a human, right? Versus not choosing him at all or trying at all. And we talk about this so much. Like, it's a fear, I don't want to. I don't want to do wrong by you. I don't want to hurt you. I know what you deserve. I don't think I can do it. I I was like that with God. Like I'm gonna just kind of. A lot of people choose lukewarm, knowingly or unknowingly, because they don't feel like they can walk the walk how God expect us to walk the walk. But with how He expect us to walk the walk is how wholeheartedly and purely, and to at least try. We have grace and mercy for when we mess up, but He still wants us to try. But because we think we got to be perfect and he just going to throw us away if we mess up, we won't even try. Translate that down to your kingdom spouse. Nah, because I'm not going to mess up with you and you throw me away, <laughs> right? That's A lot of that's going to be confirmation for y'all in here. Okay. Um, and then I put, we fail to realize his love helps us to let go and not desire certain things. So those things that you're scared of bringing to the table with God, it always says that, like they always say that he meets you where you at. Those things that you know you deal with, you struggle with, you might be bound by and we don't want to bring them, Love right? It helps us to let go, to change and correct, to not desire those things anymore. But again, you don't learn that until you experience it, until you like, hey, wait a minute, right? That was me. His love, he lovingly slaps the taste out of your mouth. Okay? God, I thank you. Because that came out way more loving than what I thought it was going to come out as. Okay? And I hit everything on the notes. Um, and go study it. You know, get some revelation and stuff for yourself. Further revelation. But I feel like we hit on a number of things. But again, kingdom marriage reflects the kingdom of heaven. And God really was dealing with me the other night. Like, when I'm, I've been on my, can I just marry you, Jesus? Like, I don't want a man, period. Like, can I just marry you? Right? He like, you want a perfect husband. You got a perfect husband. It's Jesus. But I'm also blessing you with a human husband who is not going to be perfect. But his love for you will be, right? And he going to know me. He going to love me and follow me. He going to be approved by me. And it's in y'all loving each other that y'all are going to be more like me. All right. <sighs> Lay y'all. See y'all in the next video.